Hello, good evening. Welcome to Business Live, the Christmas edition. Coming up, domestic airlines witness increase in passenger numbers as more people make travel arrangements this festive season. Also coming up, Ghana Chamber of Commerce and Industry cautions Chinese against evading Ghana's retail market. And we join the entrepreneur behind Ghana's first solar-powered mobile van meeting across beauty needs. That's on the Joy Business Van. Do stay with us. Tonight, domestic airlines are reporting an increase in passenger numbers this festive season. The numbers are expected to go up further in the coming days as more people make travel arrangements for the holidays. Sheila Tamaklo reports. To help ascertain to what extent demand for air travel has increased, we joined domestic carrier Passion Air as they check in passengers for the 11.30 flight to Tamale. As the minutes pass, many passengers begin to troop in to check in for their flights. Unlike regular days, the numbers are more and we find out it's because most people want to beat traffic as they catch up with family for the festive season. I'm going to visit a, a friend and her mom is having her birthday and we are going to celebrate her. That's why I'm going. Okay, yes. yeah. um, But why did you go by the usual bus but you decided to go with the plane? Oh, um, I'm tired. I want to rest a bit and I don't want a long journey. I don't want to sit for four to five hours. So since uh, the plane will take only 30 minutes, I opted for that. Because of the season, um, there's so much traffic in town, uh, people are rushing, so I think for me it's safer to go by air. Well, I'm actually heading to Kumase and um, this is my first time you know, taking this trip. And actually when I look at the airline, I can tell that like, they're doing pretty good. And I heard about it when I'm back in the state. So I'm looking forward to enjoy the flight. So. so why are you going to Kumasi to catch up with family for Christmas? Well, I came to celebrate, yeah. And I actually came for the return of the year, so I should have been here a long time ago, but and now I'm here. But the further I'm here, I'm still like here to enjoy with the family as a Christmas, here to celebrate. You can see you are all set, packed up here. Yeah. Where are you heading and what are you up to? Um, we are headed to Takrade. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as for us, like, it's like I said, we are sealers. So, <laughs> we are going on board. Oh, okay. Mm. So, is that to say no Christmas for you? You are going to have yours on board as part of work? Exactly. We are going to have it on board as well. Okay. Mm. Demand is so high that the airline had to introduce additional flights to accommodate the numbers. But that is still not enough. There are still a lot of standbys hoping to catch a flight should someone miss their flight as the airline is fully booked. <laughs> It's a 70, 80 that you have up to about 15 or 20 standbys. Wow. Because people want to move at a certain time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Also, on Boxing Day, for instance, we are waiting six flights for Kumasi. Our regular is five, but we are compelled to add another one because when you look at the schedule, they are all almost 100% full. We just put in a flight. Usually, when you put in a flight within 24 hours, you shouldn't be full. But the three. 340 flight is, is, is almost gone. Wow. Currently we have a flight leaving to Kumase at 12.20. Um, we have a lot of people on standbys, so um, we're compelled to introduce another flight um, that is around 3.40 today. Okay, and for the 3.40 flight, how is that also looking like? It's, it's doing very well. Uh, I'm sure within the next hour it should be full. Okay, yes. so around this holiday season, though, yes. how are you anticipating passenger numbers? How are you anticipating uh, volumes to be like? Ah, the volumes are on the high side because we are we are compelled to introduce additional flights outside our regular schedule. So um, the standby should tell you what is going on. I mean, our regular schedules are getting full, so we are compelled to introduce um, additional flights. Okay, but you mentioned something about the Boxing Day as well. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes, um, we we have additional flights on the Boxing Day to Kumasi because um, our schedules are full. Um, the flights are almost 100% uh, full, so we're compelled to add additional flights on that day. So how many additional flights? Well, it's, it's just one additional flight in addition to what we have. So we have about six flights to Kumasi on that day. Six flights to Kumasi and all these flights are booked? Yes. And uh, there are just a few seats left, so um, within the next probably 24 hours, everything will be gone. Okay. So around this season, you often see a lot of what we just witnessed, passengers who are on standby, some who are not coming in early. How is passenger activity like? <laughs> it's always like that. Um, usually, you know, check-in starts two hours before departure, 
and uh, checking counter closes 40 minutes before departure. Unfortunately, you have some passengers coming in uh, for an 8.30 flight. At 8 o'clock, you are already late. Uh, we need 40 minutes to round up everything. So um, we always encourage customers to come in early, check in, go to the boarding gates, have a seat, relax for the flight and all of that. But unfortunately, some passengers do miss their flight. And that also leads to um, the, the standbys, because if you miss your flight, you'll be on standby on the next available flight. <laughs> So the airlines expect their busiest days to be paced all along the holiday season. However, the peak days are close to the weekends. That's Thursday, Friday. And as the commercial manager indicated, the 26th of December is also going to be very, very busy. So for you looking to travel within this period, what we should look out for this morning and do your best to probably book ahead of time so that you don't miss your flight or left behind. Reporting for Joy Business from the Kotoka International Airport, my name is Sheila Tamaklu. Chinese investors have been cautioned against invading Ghana's retail market. President of the Ghana Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Dr. Nanai P.J. Danko, also the first, gave the warning at the opening of the Ghana office of Chinese printing house, Etang Group Ghana Limited. There is more in this report. President of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Dr. Nana P.J. Danka was the first, has urged Chinese investors to warn fellow citizens against invading market spaces legally preserved for locals. With over 20 years of protracted agitation between the Ghana National Traders Association, Guta, against foreign retailers, President of the Chamber argues the trend must stop. He was speaking at the launch of the Ghana office of the Chinese printing house E-Town Group Ghana. Seriously? The ease of doing business in Ghana has improved tremendously. And I want to urge my colleagues from China to tell them, the other colleagues, to bring their businesses to Ghana and advise those who are competing with this petty trading and all that with our fellow Ghanaians to stop. I want to repeat, they must stop that. Meanwhile, the Ghana office of the Chinese printing house is expected to lead in the printout of Ghanaian textbooks with 100% local content. Here is the chief executive for the Eton Group Ghana Limited. We hope to run a customer-focused business and to be a market leader within a very short period. And by the middle of next year, we should be entering the neighboring countries. The establishment of the Etang Group Ghana Limited comes in the wake of some acute challenges faced local printers in Ghana, with the leading challenge being the cost of production and high electricity tariffs. Now, Managing Director for Glyco General Insurance, Andrew Echamponche, has disclosed that his outfit is poised to take advantage and contribute to insuring against risk in the oil and gas industry. Speaking to Joy Business, he stated that Glyco General subsidiary established an oil and gas desk to contribute effectively to Ghana's booming oil and gas industry by underwriting risks in that industry. He also used the opportunity to reach out to their customers who he believes are the core of their business. This 2019, you would have heard the launch of my oil and gas desk, and that was as a, as a result of NIC's um, update and change in the regulations that governed the underwriting of oil and gas. And that's been one of the significant improvements or changes that we're going to see uplift the economy. Uh, underwriters being able to underwrite oil and gas business is big. Yes, it's a huge risk, but we have good reinsurances. We operate at the same level as you know your Lloyds of London market would with A-rated securities. At the end of the day, what the regulation has enabled us to do is to participate in the underwriting of oil and gas. So we take our retentions worth. We have trained oil and gas experts. We have the capacity in terms of capital to underwrite up to a certain limit. Uh, I made a comment as to how to improve that capacity to enable us underwriters participate a bit more meaningfully and more. Because when we talk of 
local content. It's one of the elements that we should look at carefully so that local companies can grow and be strong. And that's one of the areas that uh, I've mentioned. Now, now uh, when Becky Pia decided to start a mobile salon, many people wrote her off, but she went ahead to secure a van and literally built a salon in it. Today, the Joy Business Van gets to join her on one of her rounds. Backup Hair Express's Salon on Wheels is on the road. This is said to be Ghana's first mobile salon. It's operated by Becky Pier. Ladies first. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank the you. Salon on Wheels. Yeah. Wow, this is... Backup Salon on Wheels. Backup Salon on Wheels. Yeah. This is... I've never seen anything quite like this before. Yeah, this is actually first in Ghana. First in Ghana? Yeah, and it's made in Ghana as well. So who put all of this up? I mean... Me, myself. No, that's not true. That's very true. <laughs> yeah, that's that's very not true. true. Yeah, yeah, very true. From wow. Day, it was an empty van and I put everything together. Didn't believe it at first, but this is Becky's innovation. A solar-powered van fitted with everything you'd see in a typical salon, plus a foot pump tap system and a fixed dryer, all designed by Becky. And there is even more. This is our TV, this is a solar TV, this is a fridge. The solar panel. Everything, yeah. yeah. Panels are up there, so this are LED solar lights, uh, customized actually. This is a solar fridge. The fridge. Yeah. I have drinks, I have water, I have chocolates. Uh, yeah. Oh, and that's wine too. Yeah. And there's chocolate. Yeah, there's Bailey's actually. Woo! Becky used to sell hair attachments for ladies way back in school. It's a ladies thing and we always have to make our hair. Why not try to do something together instead of just focusing on school? Because, you know, I'm about to school right exams are filled. Don't disturb my father is salt and is salt and is salt. You know, feel like my brothers are doing well and I'm always failing. And this is doing very well. So let me just ignore them. The success of that venture got Becky to start hair on wheels in 2016. Instead of um, the normal few ones I have in the car, I decided to get a van, a sprinter bus, and then exhibit a lot of it. So you get to select whatever you want, your mm. type, your taste, your length, whatsoever. And that was working. Then again, I realized whenever I go out to meet people or people call me, and I, and I don't have to get a spot to park. The moment I'm out, I get everybody calling call me. Yeah. Becky then decided to add on more services. I was, I actually just woke up one day with the idea and I told my mom that, oh, mom, I want to have a salon of heels. All she said was, go and sleep. <laughs> go, go back and sleep. And I said, oh, I, I really want to do this. Nobody actually believed it. When I started, everybody passes by. They just <laughs> ignore me. My mom is like, you're dirty in the house. You're carpentry work. You're disturbing us. You're this, that, that. But when I started working really hard, and they started getting into it, especially when it got to the finishing. Now they saw what it was about. Nobody actually saw what I was doing because it didn't make sense. And they didn't know how the outcome was going to be until I got this feather. Salon on Wheels was launched in March, offering what any contemporary hair and beauty salon does. Washing, retouching, makeup application, braiding, wig caps, and the list goes on. The concept is catching on because of its convenience. But usually I get a lot of corporates because of time schedule. So okay. at a call, I am there. Then you know, everything is fast and going. So okay. usually I do break times and then after work. So the corporates, um, Ecobank head office, um, Coco Board, GT and the rest from one, I'm always at the ministries. Yeah, so by 5, 6, I'm on my way back and everybody gets to patronize, mm. look in, we have whatever they want and they're good to go. For now, Becky operates her mobile salon in Accra with six workers. She and her team are able to attend to an average of 60 clients a week. In a day, sometimes I do 8, sometimes I do 10. Mm. Yes, that's um, if we start um, from 10 a.m. Yes, but if we do earlier, that's per booking, we could do 12 without braiding. Yes, we do fixing and it's faster. Braiding takes time, so you have to book mm. and we get to you before we braid your hair. We don't just braid. And 
she keeps adding on more customers thanks to referrals and social media. It's been a smooth ride so far for Becky, who aspires to be a chartered accountant in future. That's some interesting stuff. We have some more time to squeeze in this. The general manager for MTN Mobile Money, Eli Hene, has touted the company's growth in the electronic payments business. He however acknowledged there have been some challenges, including the issue of fraud. He reiterated MTN is working closely with the police to curb the incidents of fraud. After 10 years of contributing to electronic payment in Ghana, MTN has recognized some of its agents and merchants for distinguishing themselves over the past years. The telco giant distributed a television set, a trip to Dubai, and the overall winner benefiting a 2019 high in the Santa Fe. The general manager of MTN Mobile Money Service, Eli Hene, said they are working with the police to complete a forensic lab in the first half of 2020 to hand thrusters that hinder the smooth operation of MTN Mobile Money Service. Customers should protect their pain. It is their secret and it should be only known to them. And they should take steps to update or change it anytime. So we will continue to work on that. The other side is the other stakeholders. We've done some work with the media. We've done training and other things, even with the judiciary. With the police, we are strengthening their forensic uh, side. And the lab I talked about in my, my statement that we should be ready with it uh, in, the, in the early part of 2020. Uh, uh, we couldn't achieve the end year goal, but we should get it ready. And that should also equip the police to do a lot more. He further added that MTN will not shield any staff member who is found capable of fraudulent activities. There are processes in place, and for staff, to the extent that any staff has any uh, action to take, we are able to monitor from beginning to the end. So where staff are involved, we will not shield them, but we have also ensured that our processes are such that one person cannot start and close an action. So it might take a collaborative effort. So that's also the ways we have taken to ensure that even at that level, we have taken away any uh, opportunity for people to misbehave. So we keep an eye on that. And if anybody is caught, yes, that person will be dealt with. We will not shield anybody. A 36-year-old MTN Momo agent, Peter Kwame Kwadon, who won a grand prize of a Hyundai Santa Fe, expressed his appreciation and urged MTN to deepen their relationship with the agents. It initially discouraged us but with the support of the uh, management, they kept on coming around, assuring us of a better future, and thereby continuing to support the Momo business. Um, the challenge of we sometimes uh, um, sending money wrongly and we not giving the proud attention in terms of uh, monies being um, returned or being refunded to us on time. This going forward, uh, my humble plea to MTN to give us merchants the, the priority when we call on them to assist us in terms of wrong transactions. MTN Momo works with 18 partner banks and more than 124,000 agents across the country. Alberta BCU's report for Joy Business. And that's it for Business Live. More news on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business.